as the final day of 2018 reaches its end, we reflect on the events that have taken place during the last year. And over the past 12 months, one man, along with another man who equally has no life, sat in a dark room and reviewed some toys. These were toys not just released this year, but others from the past that they've only managed to get around to reviewing now as they're quite lazy. But which were the best of the best, and which were so damn awful that they earned a place on our bottom five list? Well, that's what we're here to find out. As this year succumbs to its wounds and slowly fades from existence, only to be reborn phoenix-like from the flames into 2019, we reflect back on the top 10 toys of 2018! YouTube viewers and random subscribers and welcome along to the top 10 toys of 2018 and you know what I'm not even gonna act surprised there it is another year is over and done with wow didn't time fly anyway what did 2018 mean for me well here's some of my highlights from the past year in January, we received a new addition to the family as we gained a new dog, Smokey. My granddad had a schnauzer when I was growing up, and I've always had an affinity for that breed. He's a rescue from Almost Home Animal Sanctuary, and after a few tough years, he's now being spoiled rotten by us. In March, I felt an odd tingle in my tummy, which led to me getting my appendix out. That was fun, by which I mean quite painful and irritating. Stupid useless body parts. And just as an extra kick in the teeth as I was released from hospital, I found out that Robot Wars had been cancelled again. I'd made a documentary on the show back in February which served as a 20 year celebration, but now doubles as a tribute to a show that I hold very dear. It was a fantastic experience to make it, and my thanks again to everyone who contributed to it. In April, I teamed up with Anthony to create Ant Wait Anarchy, our own miniature version of Robot Wars for his channel. I built the arena and edited the show while Anthony has built close to 100 Ant Wait competitors for the series. Fighting robots has never been this fun. In late September, Anthony and me flew to Belgium to commentate on the Fighting My Bots World Series hosted at Dutch Robot Games. This was an amazing experience and I'm so grateful to all the people who made it happen. Likewise, in October, I was invited to be a part of the commentary team for Bugglebots, a new online Beetleweight robot fighting show. The amount of effort and talent and time put into this show is simply incredible, and it was an honour to be involved. And wrapping things up, after a three-year absence, we brought back the following The Nerd Live radio show on a brand new station, Bounce FM. It's so good to be back on the air, chatting about all the latest top stories from movies, TV shows, games and comics. Long may it continue. But never mind all of that stuff. The most important thing I did this year was sit in a dark room with a couple of friends and review some toys. But which toys were the ultimate, the best of the best, the top 10 toys of the year, if you will? Well, that's what this video is all about. So let's get into the list and I'll throw in my customary bottom five as well, just for good measure. So let's start off this list. We're normal top 10 lists start at number six. <laughs> nah, I'm just kidding. It's number 10. It's number 10. Go. Number 10. The Jumanji Board Game Pieces. As with every year, I like to start off the top 10 with something a little bit weird and different, and these fit the bill perfectly. When I was younger, I built a Jumanji board replica, and for years I searched for the game pieces as I couldn't make them myself. Flash forward to 2018, and I discovered these through Candy Geeks, the company who made the Proton Pack that got the number 2 spot on last year's list. These are made by Random Prop Shop, and are 3D printed based on original sculpts by Alan, the man behind Random Prop Shop. I fell in love with these, as they contain so much detail for their small size, and the paint apps are absolutely fantastic. Throw in the fact that he made screen accurate dice as part of the set, and they make for a cool collectible, as well as completing my board game replica. Alan is working on a replica of the game as well, and I can't wait to see it. No doubt it will appear on one of these lists in the future if it's as good as some of his other work. Speaking of which, check out his prop replicas over on his Instagram page, they are something truly special. Number 9 The Simpsons Talking Krusty Doll 
Again, something a little bit weird. This is a toy that was released many years ago and holds a bit of a nostalgic place in my heart. It's from a Treehouse of Horror episode that has become quite iconic and mirrors the Chucky doll which tries to kill Homer. What's so great about this toy is that for something designed for kids, the makers really went out of their way to copy the doll seen in the show, from the style of packaging on the back to the fact that it has a good and evil setting. It isn't fully accurate, but you can tell that they put thought into its design. Yes, I would have liked a few more accurate phrases, and the doll constantly looks like it wants to kill you. But aside from that, it's a neat little collectible. Number 8. The 13th Doctor Adventure Doll Yeah, I don't know why they call this an adventure doll either, but this is a pretty solid figure regardless. The detail is nice, the articulation is great, and the clothing actually fits better than a Big Chief Studios figure. I've seen the original prototype head moulds for this, and the paint apps just do not do it justice. The detail in the original looks exactly like Jodie Whittaker. There are a lot of talented figure modders out there, and with the right paint applications and texturing, I swear this could be a contender for a Big Chief Studios figure. Here's hoping the 5-inch figure looks just as good. Number 7 The Marvel Select Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2 Figures These are another mainstay of the top 10 toys list. The Marvel Select figures are some of my favourite collectibles. I also reviewed the Black Panther and Thor Ragnarok figures this year as well, and while those were good, I had to choose the Guardians figures because of the sheer variety. The detail on all of them is simply sublime, it's bright and colourful, while the accessories are fantastic too. The two main figures are Star-Lord and Drax, but they also come with Rocket and a baby Groot which actually features articulation. I am very annoyed that we didn't get a Gamora to complete the lineup, making the team look somewhat incomplete when on display. I'm a massive Guardians of the Galaxy fan, and to see them in figure form, created by one of my favourite figure makers, is wonderful to see. Number 6 The Crystal Carvings Crystal Tardises not really a toy, but a wonderful and classy collectible. I've reviewed several of these over 2018, and none of them have failed to impress me. I can see myself having these on display in a cabinet in my living room when I'm an old man, and I can't say that about most of the other entries on this list. The 3D laser engraving effect used to make these look so good, with each doctor rendered in three dimensions inside a solid brick of crystal shaped to look like a police box. Add in the light up base, and they become a stunning, eye catching, and high quality way to represent your love for the show. Crystal carvings have all of the Doctor's incarnations available, so you can choose your favourite version to display forever, encased in flawless crystal. But never mind all that high quality good stuff, now it's time to take our time on a traditional break from the top 10 list to focus on the lowest of the low, the worst of the worst. That's right, the music's kicking in, all of you know what time it is, in fact I think this is what most of you came here to see in the first place. It's 2018's Bottom 5. The Bottom 5! And at number 5, it's the Hexbug Robot Wars Clusterbot Stadium. Not necessarily a bad thing, but it is a little bit questionable. I love Hexbug, particularly their work on the BattleBots line over in the United States. With Robot Wars being cancelled this year, it left a bit of a sour taste in fans' mouths, and with a few dribs and drabs of merchandise released from the series, this didn't help. Essentially a reskin of an already existing Hexbug toy, it didn't even grasp the correct terminology of what a cluster bot is. A fun toy, but little to do with Robot Wars. At 4, it's the Infinity War Titan FX figures. Avengers Mania hit us hard in 2018 with the release of Infinity War and plenty of merchandise was released to go along with it. I remember getting the Mark III Iron Man toy 10 years ago when the first movie in the MCU was released and being really impressed with it. But what a slippery slope it's been since then. At the bottom we have these, which feel like those cheap hollow figures that have been farted out by the boatload over the last few years from many franchises, but with a big, chunky electronic backpack thrown in that adds sound effects. Because, you know, we all remember that scene where Thor had a big silver backpack in the movie, don't we? I will admit that it's clever that no matter which backpack is attached it will recognise that figure and only play its speech effects, but aside from that, these just feel kind of lame. Taking the third spot, it's the B&M 12th Doctor set. I got a lot of flack for reviewing these despite making a video saying that I wouldn't, but after the amount of requests I got asking me to take a look at them, I eventually gave in, and they were exactly what I thought they would be. Poor build quality, awful paint apps, and not much new. 
that would be okay, aside from the fact that this was the first time that Bill Potts was released as a figure. That's right. This was released before the actual Bill Potts standalone figure came out. And these were super hard to find, as only a limited amount were made. This led to scalpers selling them for ludicrous prices online, and people travelling for miles just to try and find them. In the end, they're cheap, lazy, and just basic playthings for kids. Remember when Doctor Who figures were so good that kids could play with them, and adult fans could collect and display them at the same time? That feels like such a long time ago. Taking the runner-up spot, it's the Character Options 13th Doctor Sonic Screwdriver. I've made my thoughts on the design of this Sonic quite clear by now, but characters first release of this toy did it no favours. The moulding was so weak, you could see the electronics inside it, and the light effects were duller than the person who dreamed up this monstrosity in the first place. So awful, the character were quick to re-release it with improved detail and features just a few weeks after it came out. It left a lot of fans angry that they had rushed to pick up what was ultimately an inferior version of the Doctor's new toy. And the worst toy of 2018 is, drumroll please, the Avengers Infinity War Marvel Legends Infinity Gauntlet. I don't even know where to begin here. Marvel Legends have made some stunning roleplay toys from the Marvel movies over the years that you would swear that they're genuine prop replicas. In fact, some of them have even ended up on top 10 toys from the past couple of years here. Remember the Iron Man helmet with a magnetic faceplate? The Star-Lord helmet with built-in Bluetooth speaker? Amazing replicas with creative and practical ideas implemented into their designs. So what the hell happened? The Infinity Gauntlet is a stride in the wrong direction. It looks like cheap plastic. The back is covered in screw holes and little to no paint apps have been applied. The lights and sounds are so very basic with static Infinity Stones that can't be popped out. I will admit that the individual finger movement is a nice idea, as is the fact that you can lock the gauntlet with the fingers open or closed when on display, but for the price, this is a gigantic middle finger to the fans who expected so much more, but only got half of what they deserved. And so, those are 2018's bottom five. And to punish them, I've decided to hand them over to an angry fiancé who's put up with far too much for far too long. Well, these aren't staying in the house. But Elizabeth had failed to realise another one of the gauntlet's faults. It couldn't click. Stupid thing! No wonder it's the worst toy of the year! <laughs> That's how it's done! Besides, even if that whole gauntlet snapping thing would have worked anyway, it would have only removed 50% of the toys. At least this way guarantees complete annihilation. <laughs> I love to break things. Ah, destruction in cars. What's not to love? Anyway, enough of the bad. It's back to the good as we continue on with our top 10 toys list. Number 5. The 13th Doctor 720 Sonic Screwdriver. Why on earth is this in the top 5? It's too small and has the wrong texture making it completely inaccurate. Well, I like this, and I kinda wish this is the design that they had chosen for the new Sonic Screwdriver with the wooden handle effect. Imagine this with an oak coloured top section and the lower part wrapped in leather. As a toy, it offers some fun features which character could learn from. Imagine it, a toy where both buttons actually work. The size makes it very compact and easy to hold, the lights are very bright and impressive, the sound is loud and clear, and the emitter actually rotates via the use of the secondary button. This proves that sometimes inaccuracy can make for a fun toy. Number 4 The Hexbug, Battlebots, Witch Doctor and Bronco 
Now we're getting into the big leagues. I've been very impressed with the Hexbug BattleBots rival packs. Even the Minotaur and Beta won last year's top spot. This set gets knocked down a few places for a couple of reasons. They're still very fun and highly impressive, but the Bronco could have used more work. The flipper's a little clunky and awkward to use despite its awesome power, while the drive can be frustrating due to its awkward turning circle. Likewise, I'm really happy to get a toy of the new Witch Doctor, as this design is so much more pleasing to the eye than the old version, but as a slight nitpick, it would have been cool to see a new robot released entirely. Whatever happened to that Hypershock prototype with the removable rake? Also, how cool would it have been to have seen the self rider actually work? Still some of my all time favourite toys due to their ingenuity and creativity, I'm very excited to see this remote control rivals line continue. Number 3 The Big Chief Studios War Doctor At the beginning of 2017, we lost an icon in John Hurt, who starred in a string of my favourite movies and brought a weary gravitas to his brief portrayal as the War Doctor in the 50th anniversary special. So how can I not appreciate this Big Chief Studios figure? Yes, it still has the flaws that most of their figures do, such as the clothes which sit a little awkwardly on the body, and let's not forget that horrible moulding issue on the back of the head which appeared on several of them. But aside from that, this is a stunning figure. The sheer amount of detail on the head sculpt is worth the price alone. The wrinkles, the texturing, the paint apps, they all combine to create an amazing lifelike representation of the late actor. While the clothes are baggy, they are so well done, with the worn leather jacket being a particular highlight. Throw in some amazing accessories such as the impeccably detailed miniature replica of the moment, and this makes for a perfect tribute to honour one of the final roles of a brilliant actor, and a doctor who made a gigantic impact in such a short space of time. Number 2 The Celestial Toy Store 10th Doctor Ultimate Edition Sonic Screwdriver Taking the runner-up spot, again another prop replica from the Celestial Toy Store that just knocks it out of the park. Personally, I prefer the design of the 11th Doctor Sonic, but this is an exquisite design, which kicked off my obsession with Sonic screwdrivers all the way back in 2005. This Ultimate Edition takes its appearance from the version used by David Tennant during a Series 4 run, and CT once again does it justice. The tolerances are so high, the teeth fit together flawlessly, the emitter light is extremely powerful, as is the sound, which even includes a Doppler effect, meaning it gets louder as the emitter is slid up. The paint effects used to create the crackle design on the hand are inspired, really giving it that cracked porcelain look. Another great little addition is the blue bar on the side of the handle, which subtly glows in the dark to indicate the Gallifreyan technology housed within. Even the transparent cylindrical housing revealed when the emitter is slid up is so clear and beautiful, it's a truly wonderful replica. Had someone handed this to me when I was a teenager, I'm pretty sure my head would have exploded. It's a great work of art that I'm proud to own, but I can't help but prefer his work on the 11th Doctor Sonic, due to the more challenging nature of the design. In the end, it is an ultimate edition, and it's certainly the ultimate version of any 10th Doctor Sonic that I've ever owned. And so, that's almost it. Our list is almost complete, but there's one spot left remaining. That's right, the top spot. Numero uno, the top toy of 2018. But out of the multitude of toys that I've reviewed over the past year, which one is deserving of our grand prize? Well, much like with last year, I've decided to give the number one spot to a toy. Not to a prop replica, not to a Hot Toys collectible or anything like that. A toy. Something that kids can go out and pick up from a toy shop, but adults can also pick up and collect and put on display as well. And I think I've managed to do that with the number one spot this year. This toy holds a very special place in my heart. It also holds a special place in the hearts of people who are fans of this franchise. And I think from the moment that I start talking about it, a lot of people will instantly know what it is. And I've tried to justify why this deserves the number one spot as best I can in the following segment. So bear with me as I introduce the top toy of 2018. Number one. Ever since I was 8 years old, I have loved Robot Wars. Not a lot of people seem to understand it, and that still seems true today as it was brought back, then sadly cancelled again after three series. But in that brief time it was back on air, it allowed me to connect with so many others across the world that had the same passion for it that I did, and I formed fast friendships because of it. 
2018 may have seen the second death of the show, but it also saw Hexbug release the first new Robot Wars toys in nearly two decades. Yes, some were disappointing, like the Clusterbot Stadium, and others were fun, yet quite generic, like the Impulse and Royal Pain set, but there was one toy that managed to please everyone. The one toy they made based on an actual robot from the show. You know what it is. With that said, the number one spot goes to... The Hexbug Robot Wars Matilda. Yes, the detail isn't as good as some of the other toys on this list, and it isn't in the same universe as a prop replica, but it's the idea behind this toy that gets it the number one ranking for 2018. As I said, it's the only toy released from the reboot of the show to be based on not only the house robots, but any of the machines featured in the show. Plus, it's a nice bit of ingenuity from Hexbug, as it's currently the only Robot Wars or BattleBots toy to feature two independently controlled weapons, with triggers for the flipping tusks and the rear flywheel present on the top of the controller. It's huge and chunky, by far the biggest robot fighting toy made by Hexbug. To some, it may seem a little bit basic to get the top spot, but hear me out on this. I had all but given up hope of this show ever making a comeback, let alone seeing any new toys released. And should Matilda be the only toy created by Hexbug that's based on a real Robot Wars robot, then so be it. But it means that fans can go out, buy one, and put it on display as a nice little tribute to the fact that for one shining moment, their favourite show was back. And that is why the Hexbug Matilda earns 2018's Top Toy of the Year. And so, those were my top 10 toys of 2018. Did you agree with my list? Did you disagree? Let me know in the comments section either way. And all that's left for me to do is to wish each and every one of you a happy, healthy and bright 2019. Happy New Year everyone. And let's take this new year as a new start for us all. Let's stop fighting with each other and arguing and shouting. Because in the end, it doesn't matter what gender you are. It doesn't matter what race you are. It doesn't matter what religion you are. A little respect goes a long way for everyone. And once we learn to work together, we can work on building a better tomorrow for years to come for all of us. I'll see you all in 2019, guys. Happy New Year.